Hello everyone, this is Jasen Mutlak from SellerMate and this is a tutorial on connecting Wi-Fi mounts. The question is, do you really want to connect SellerMate to a Wi-Fi mount? Hear me out. In a typical setup, you have SellerMate connected to your camera, filter wheel, focuser, and usually your mount. So why introduce another Wi-Fi device in the network since you're already connected to StutterMate via Wi-Fi. Cables are always more reliable. At any rate, if you insist on connecting to a Wi-Fi network, then what you need to understand is that all devices must be on the same network in order to talk to each other. So this includes StutterMate, mount, tablets, any device you use. In the first mode we're going to talk about, which is the most popular mode in which the mount is acting as the hotspot or as the main router where all other devices are connected to. For this example, we'll be using the Skywatcher AZ GTI mount, but this tutorial is applicable to all Wi-Fi mounts. In this mode, we see the mount creates a hotspot uh, typically called SynScan, uh, followed by a code, and it has an IP address of 192.168.4.1, or what is called the gateway, and then all other devices would have uh, IP addresses 4.234, etc. So in this mode, all the devices will need to join the AZGTI hotspot, and then once this happens, they can talk to each other and this way you can control the mount from StutterMate. The other mode that is available is station, or I'd like to call it client mode. In this case, StutterMate acts as the primary router, and StutterMate already has its own hotspot at the IP address 10.250.250.1. In this mode, all the devices, including your tablet or your laptop, including the mount itself, are connected to StutterMate. This can be done by using the mount uh, on app, where you can join it in station mode to another uh, Wi-Fi network. In this case, you'll be joining it to the StutterMate hotspot. The final mode is where you have an actual uh, home router or uh, even a mobile router and then make everything, including your stutter mate and uh, tablet and the phone and mount to join this mobile router or router at home. And the benefits for this is, of course, uh, that you can get to keep your internet connection. All right, so here um, we will give a short tutorial on how to do it from actual stutter mate. If we go to the device tab, the first thing we need to change is if the device is 5 GHz, then we need to change it to 2.4 GHz because all the mount hotspots or dongles, they operate on 2.4 GHz. You can leave the channel to default, but if you know the channel congestion in your region, then you can select a specific channel. Now let's go ahead and change the Wi-Fi band, and we need to wait about 10 to 20 seconds for it to do the switch. What will happen is that the StutterMate network will be disconnected, but then the tablet will reconnect again. Here we see that we are reconnected again. And then we can go back to the device tab and check that we indeed switch to the 2.4 gigahertz band. The next step is we need to join StutterMate to the AZGTI hotspot. So let's go and select it. It's the SynScan network and let's tap connect. We get a warning and let's click yes to proceed. So what will happen now is StutterMate will disconnect from its own hotspot and will try to connect to the Mount Wi-Fi network. And this means that we also need to be connected now to the Mount Wi-Fi network because we all need to be talking to each other on the same network. Now, if you go here in your uh, tablet network settings and you see StellarMate hotspot still there, then this indicates that 
Salamit failed to connect to the Mount Wi-Fi network. Uh, but here, thankfully, we don't see it, and we connect to the Mount Wi-Fi network. And we go back. If Salamit fails, you can always try to reconnect again. All right, so now let's go to setup again, and here we see Stellamate already started looking for the device and this new network. And uh, let's just give it some time until it finds the devices on this network. All right, here we can see Stellamate has the expected IP address 4.3. Now we connect to it. Connection is successful. And the next step is to add an equipment profile. So let's tap the add button. Now let's select the mount, the AZGTI. For the camera, we're just gonna select CCD simulator. And let's just name the profile and save it. Next, we start the equipment profile. And here we see we are presented with the port selector. And for the AZGTI, we see it's by default trying to connect to the mount hotspot. So the default settings would work uh, well. Let's just connect all. Here we get the optical trains configuration. Let's just edit the primary train just to double check everything is fine. And here we see the mount already selected and detected. Everything looks good. Let's go to the sky map. And here we see the, the mount is actually in its default home position, which is looking north at the horizon level. Let's try uh, slowing by going to Deneb and here I'm clicking go to. The mount is already in motion. Here we see a magenta that indicates that the slew is in progress. And then it will should turn to green once the slew is over. If we go back to ECOS to the quick mount controls, we can see the other controls for mount speed, parking, tracking, go to, and abort. So for example, if we click on the P button, now it looks, uh, it is unparked. If we click on it, we will commence parking. We can verify this by going back to the sky map and seeing that it is indeed going back to its original parking position. All right, so this is a quick tutorial uh, that covers one mount brand, but it's applicable to all mounts. I hope this was useful. Clear skies and uh, take care.